say that I prefer being beat up to being a dead person. <laughs> being a dead person is so boring. You just lie there, sometimes for hours. You are not a priority. They get to you when they get to you. Unless, of course, you have a major role. I've never had a major role. Not yet, anyway. But I seem to be getting quite a reputation for being a random dead person. <laughs> In fact, I've been dead on three TV shows, including Six Feet Under. <laughs> my agent tells me the producers have been quite impressed by how long I'm able to hold my breath. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
<laughs> That's what made me decide to pursue my career as an actress and to wholeheartedly pursue my goals. The movie was about a high school romance that quickly turned to disaster when the all-star jock proved to be a psychotic jerk who used violence to control his girlfriend. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Fred Savage, known for playing the kid in The Wonder Years, portray an evil bully. Who, <laughs> portray an evil bully. He was so amazing, so scary. The movie was called No One Would Tell, and the girlfriend was played by Candace Cameron of TV's Full House fame. Sometimes when I'm on set, waiting while the shot is set up, I speak to my fellow actors. I often mention No One Would Tell as an early influence on my work. Usually, whoever I'm talking to tells me that Fred and Candace probably got cast as those roles because they had both been child stars. They had name recognition, uh, not to mention connections. It's kind of a joke. I tell whoever that it is that it's obviously way too late for me to be a child star. <laughs> <laughs> but on a more serious note, I tell them, you know, I'm just trying to get my name out there as an occasional dead person and make connections through my role as a non-speaking prostitute who gets roughed up sometimes. <laughs> it's just a matter of being patient, I tell them. But really, it's hard not to get discouraged in a business like mine, especially when I turn on the TV and see Nicolette Sheridan playing a woman who's just received an eye transplant and is acting up a storm while being bombarded with images from the last moment of her donor's life. <sighs> or see Jamie Luner of Melrose Place fame playing a blind lawyer who was raped by a guy who then escapes from prison vowing to kill her. <sighs> when that happens, I get totally down in the, the dumps about the state of my career. I mean, I have to face the fact that maybe I'm not getting the breaks because I'm basically well, I'm basically well, I'm basically nobody. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. What I'm hoping for is a plumb part as a forensic investigator on an ongoing series for network TV. But I don't want to be just the kind of investigator that, you know, wears a lab coat and puzzles over a corpse in an antiseptic environment. <laughs> I want to be the kind that gets to wear low-cut blouses tailored to fit the body, flake hugging slacks and tousled hair while she investigates a dead body at the scene of a crime. Instead of being a dead body at the scene of a crime, <laughs> or a nameless corpse with a tag on my toe, I, at the very least, want to portray complex human emotions on screen and, and have my own trailer! <laughs> this business is full of opportunities for an actress who knows how to play the hell out of a living person with a speaking part. <laughs> I know they're out there for me to sink my teeth into and I can't wait. <laughs>